a large twin model water tube flue boiler. As I mentioned in the last episode, this is a very well made unit that just requires a bit of attention. The first adjustment to this boiler is the way that it is fastened to the base. It's held using two boiler bands, which are bolted down like this at one side, and then at the other side they are adjustable to tighten them to hold the boiler securely onto the base. This is the adjustable side, and I'm actually adjusting it. Two brass bolts go down into the block, and then you simply adjust the nut that's on the bolt. It doesn't need to be massively over tight. The nuts just require nipping up to hold the boiler firmly to the brass base, which is a very simple thing made out of two pieces of brass angle with some spacers at the front and rear. The good thing about this fixing system is the boiler is held to the base, but no part of the boiler itself touches the base, and therefore none of the heat is conducted away from the boiler. Originally I was going to modify the chimney top in this episode, just look at it. I think that deserves an entire episode all to itself. For the moment, as I showed in the last episode as well, I removed it, and here is the last time I had to look at it before I took it off the bench and put it in a safe place. What I'm doing at the moment is increasing the tension on the other boiler bands that hold the mahogany strips in place. This is a simple job. I hold a spanner on the nut and just tighten the bolt. I don't really know much about this boiler. Originally the back head was painted by someone and then the paint was removed and I quite like the antique effect that it left. It does need a pressure gauge and siphon so I'm looking through my box of pressure gauges and siphons but the ones I have of the right size don't work. This one's definitely not working. I couldn't help but think, what's caused this? Has someone put a lot of pressure into the boiler? Well, no, I don't think so. I'll have a closer look shortly. I found a suitable Chinese siphon in a box of bits that I had. Here are the two pressure gauges that I have. The one on the right doesn't zero properly, and the one on the left is very far from zero. I'm going to dismantle the worst of the two to have a look at it. This gauge appears to be much newer than the other one, and its construction is different. It does not have any bolts in the side to hold the outer casing in place. The question is, how do I take off the front part of the gauge without damaging it? Initially, I gently levered it with a screwdriver, but this is not the answer. A better way of doing it, which I should have done before I removed the bolts, is to grip it very lightly in the chuck of my small walk or lathe. Then I can just pull away the front part. When I look at this pressure gauge, I think I know what's wrong with it. Someone's tried to dismantle it in the past, removing the front part and rotating it. This then bent the Bordon tube inside so the pressure gauge needle was never going to be in the right position. I re-bent the board on tube and reassembled it, and as you can see, it's not quite right, but it's like the other one now. I'm actually going to buy a new pressure gauge for this boiler, but for the moment, I'll use one of these. Having an accurate and reliable pressure gauge on the boiler is essential. I decided to fit the older of the two pressure gauges to the siphon, but there was a problem. I could not get the nut tight enough to hold it in place. It still rattled about, even when the nut was really tight. Obviously, the threaded part of the nut is too long for this pressure gauge. To make it work, I need to shorten the nut, so I removed the siphon, and then using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a drum sander, I cleaned off some of the top of the nut which effectively made the threaded part a bit shorter, and now when I try the pressure gauge in position, it works fine. I made the mistake of sealing this siphon with some Loctite 542. It's a very small siphon, and this 542 just blocked up the hole. Not the hole you can see here. The hole that was blocked is inside the barrel of the siphon. I refitted the siphon, and at this stage I didn't know it was blocked. I went ahead and refitted the siphon to the boiler bush, tightening what is called the banjo union with my Barco spanner. When you tighten the union nut to the gauge, it's really important to use two spanners to hold the gauge in place. If you don't do this, you can damage the internal mechanism. 
Once I fitted the gauge, I connected some compressed air to the boiler, and nothing happened. The gauge showed no pressure, but when I opened the tap at the top, there was definitely air in the boiler. The fault became obvious when I removed the pressure gauge. The siphon was blocked somewhere internally. I removed this siphon because I didn't really like it. I didn't throw it away because all I have to do is apply a little bit of heat and some compressed air and that will clear the blockage. I wanted a siphon that was more in keeping with the physical size of this boiler. And when I looked through my box of pressure gauge parts, I found this siphon, which is a lot better. I fitted this one in exactly the same way as previously shown, but without the Loctite. This boiler has a manufacturer's test certificate, so in this case I didn't perform a hydraulic test. Although my better judgement told me that I should. At £60 per square inch, this happened. This safety valve would appear to be of the flatulent non-pop type. Very much like the Stuart Models type of safety valve, it makes a horrible noise when it's blowing off. And often in between blowing off it makes a noise too. I'm going to change this safety valve for a pop type from Jubilee fittings. In this clip I'm adjusting the safety valve to see what the parameters are for the range of blowing off. It's not bad, it drops 10 psi and then very slowly shuts. I much prefer the pop type, which open and shut very quickly. I turned off the air supply and closed the valve in the boiler, and the boiler held the pressure perfectly. Here I've opened the valve to release the pressure. With the boiler empty, despite tapping the pressure gauge, it didn't go to zero. I'll buy a new one from Blackgates Engineering very shortly. That is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.